All right, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill's World Bible School, and welcome to Take Another Look. I'm just uh, watching uh, on two screens here, trying to watch for people to come on board with me this morning. Uh, we appreciate all of you who are uh, supporters of World Bible School online uh, ministries as we are uh, teaching. Um, good to see, uh, yeah, e evangelist, um, and no, I'm drinking coffee, actually. Uh, this is morning here in uh, Joplin, Missouri. It is snowing, pouring snow outside, and we haven't really had a good snow this winter. So, uh, you know, we need one at least every winter. So we hope that um, uh, it, it is good. Good to see um, uh, our our spiritual daughter, Miriam, Linda Routley, one of our students in World Bible School. Uh, good to see everyone this morning joining in. Already many are getting on board. Uh, we are so grateful for all of you. And um, yeah, so uh, we're, we're talking about the book of Revelation uh, as we get started this morning. Last night's broadcast with our panel discussion, we had some technical uh, problems and we got that straightened out, uh, but um, it really didn't uh, produce the best show possible. However, uh, it, it was salvageable and I was able to edit the end off and, and so on. So uh, good to see everyone. Good to see Dr. Faye this morning. Um, good to see Tenderheart joining us this morning. So let's go ahead and get started as people continue to join in and are a part of this broadcast this morning. Uh, this is a, an ongoing series where I'm talking about the book of Revelation verse by verse. And I'm sharing with you what I believe Holy Spirit has shared with me. Uh, so as we look at the book of Revelation, uh, this is where Jesus, uh, John has this vision and Jesus is uh, is uh, revealing to John's awareness, uh, uh, unveiled truth um, as we look at these in this lessons at these lessons. And how I uh, how I define revelation is the unveiling of the father's heart. And so very grateful this morning for uh, all of you joining in uh, as we get into what John sees next and what John hears next. And and so uh, listen to the scriptures, listen to the evidence surrounding the scriptures as I present the historical and the spiritual aspect of these verses. So let's continue in Revelation 18, verse 19 and 20. And this is uh, lesson number 149 in the book of Revelation. And it says from the New King James, they, they threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing and saying, alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour, uh, she uh, is made desolate or has been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heavens, and your holy uh, apostles and prophets. Um, for God has avenged her, avenged you on her. Uh, some translators agree that this should read saints and apostles. Uh, but, but nonetheless, as we look at this this morning, uh, we continue to see the destruction of Babylon, uh, aka the Babylonian mindset within the Edemic nature. Uh, and just keep in mind that we are are not of Adam, but we are of our eternal Father who created us out of Himself before the foundation of the universe was formed. And so, as we've looked at past lessons, we have seen how that the word mourn or the world mourns over Babylon's fall, uh, which is for me a picture of the emotions of our mind, which found dependency within a man-made system and now mourns for its destruction or, dis or over its disconnection. Um, and as we think about this, uh, we need to realize that a Babylonian uh, city, that the city of Babylon was destroyed in about, I think about 539 uh, uh, BC, 
And here we are in the first century AD. And so we're not talking about a literal destruction of a city, but we're talking about the symbolism here since the book of Revelation is clearly from the Greek language, a book of symbolic truth. And, and so as we look at this, the English word for mourn uh, means, um, means to... Um, The English word for mourn means um, to feel or to show deep sorrow or regret for someone uh, or their death, typically by following con uh, uh, conventions such as the wearing of black clothes. Now, think about this. It means to feel regret or sadness about the loss of uh, or disappearance of something. And so as we consider this today, the fact is, is that the Greek word here for mourn uh, comes from the word penthos, penthos. And it means uh, uh, to be in grief or sorrow. Now, here's the thing that too often what we have found is, is that people um, uh, that have had a religious belief system, uh, we find that out of it has been a lie. All of a sudden, uh, when they find out, they discover that there's been a lie in that religious concept. All of a sudden, our emotions become down in the dump, so to speak, because we no longer have a belief system that carries any credibility to it. And let's look at these verses again, uh, but from the Passion Translation now, as we as we see how that um uh how that they um um give us a little bit clearer picture uh of um of this scenario uh so this is very important okay watch this uh from the passion translation now uh it says uh a as, as as a sign of their dismay, they threw dust on their heads and shouted with sobs and griefs and grief. How horrible, so horrible, O oh, great city Babylon, for in one moment you suffered such destruction. You who once made the merchants on the sea so very wealthy, rejoice over her, O oh, heaven, you apostles and prophets and holy believers rejoice, for on your behalf God pronounced the judgment against her, and she wanted to bring uh, that she wanted to bring upon you. Now, here's the thing. When we talk about the, uh, the, the city, here's something that writer and commentator very briefly, uh, uh, Jake Preston Eby says very briefly, uh, if ever there was a facet of the pleasure of the Lord that we desire to see in manifestation or and to joyfully participate in, it is the, that he, uh, it is this, that he do this, his pleasure on Babylon. Now, that doesn't sound so good, does it? Uh, but but hang with me because there's really an, an explanation or a, a an unveiled truth about that. Uh, it, it's it is the the uh, it, it in the natural it would appear to have been the right thing to do, which was to rejoice over a city uh, called Babylon in 1539 B.C. Uh, as it was burning to the point of ruin. However, as the merchants were sad and mourning over her, this seemingly uh, literal yet historical account of a great symbolism to John, and he saw this in this vision while in prison on the Isle of Patmos. So what a day of rejoicing as uh, in, in, uh, it is when the creation of the Lord discovered that Jesus came to sacrifice himself so that mankind could be reconnected back to the mind of God. And he was, as, as he was hung on the cross, at a place of the skull. Yes, Calvary was the hill called Golgotha. There's been many stories, many sermons, many songs, many things written about that. But what we need to understand that that Golgotha was also known as the, the place of a skull, uh, which is an allegorical picture for a place of the mind, the skull and the head, the mind. Uh, it's just a symbolic connection because the mind is really 
the soul, will, intellect, and emotions. Uh, but when people are awakened from the slumber of the carnal mind, this is the moment when people rejoice in songs uh, and sing songs of deliverance. Now, all of a sudden, it is as if the prison bars swing open and the blindfolds are removed from the face of your mind, and you realize that Christ did not come to redeem you from sin, but to reconnect you to the mind of, uh, of the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, so you no longer operate from the mind of mistaken identity. So when I say he didn't come to redeem you from sin, actually sin is translated mistaken identity, identity hamartia in the Greek, and we need to understand that as we see this, Christ came to reconnect us to a mind that was blinded from truth. Uh, so the reality is, is that uh, Revelation 18, 19, and 20 in the Amplified Bible shows us this. And they drew uh, threw dust on their heads and were crying out, weeping and mourning, saying, whoa, whoa, for the, for the great city where all who had ships at the sea uh, at sea grew rich from her uh, her great wealth because in one hour she has been laid waste rejoice over her o heaven and you saints god's people and apostles and prophets who were martyred because god has ex executed vengeance for you through righteous judgment upon her now the bible says in colossians 1 verse 21 even though you were once distant from him living in the shadow of your uh, evil thoughts and actions, he re reconnected you back to himself. That's from the Passion Translation. So what we want to understand here is with, when the eternal Christ redeemed mankind, it means that he literally opened the door of reconnecting your memory back to its proper place. Uh, it, it does not mean that all mankind operates from the, uh, from the conscious mind. Oftentimes we, uh, we operate from the, uh, uh, the unconscious mind where mankind has a kind of knowing that God is real, but religiously believes that he is eternally separated from God. However, that is the lie of the deceived mind, where mankind believes that uh, because of Adam and Eve, that because they messed up, that, uh, that it caused all mankind to be lost unless he walks through a bunch of religious red tape and somehow finds his way back to God. So what God has redeemed mankind from is the religious system of our day, which tells us all of these lies. Now, a religious system is not a group of people per se, but a mindset that is not of the father's mind. So the, the it can be a mindset that is in the religious system, uh, but it is, or in a group of people, but it really emanates from a religious system. And so that's what we want to realize first and foremost. Uh, the fact is, um, uh, what we do is we look at uh, how that these systems have been. I mean, think about it this way. Uh, while there are those who do not worship in spirit and truth, they still there is a remnant of people who have been drawn out from the world system and into the marvelous light and knowledge of the Father's mind. So if you are in a religious system, here's the thing about it, is we just don't take on the mindset of a system. So it, just because you fellowship with people that are in various denominations or in various groups doesn't mean that you take on the same mindset unless the mindset emanates from the unconditional love of the Father. Uh, so uh, if, if mankind does not know it yet, and, and I want you to hear this, even if mankind doesn't know it yet, okay? And I'm, I, I just group all of mankind into God's family. But even if mankind does not know it yet, it has been made, uh, he has been made uh, free so that he can partake of the Christ life and the Christ consciousness in a very personal and powerful way. And even among God's elect today, it seems that if some still uh, teeter-totter between the law and, and, and uh, the grace of God, it just means there's some indecision. It just means there's some things going on where people are uncertain yet. 
But here's the thing that it seems that if some want uh, still want to experience the freedom of sonship, uh, uh, but are so bound by uh, by rules and regulations that they just cannot break free. Uh, what we see is John uh, ex experiencing uh, a, a, a revelation that really we can participate in or we can grab hold of. Now, here in John's vision, God reminds us that the Babylonian system of thought has been made desolate. So I want you to see that first and foremost, that this system uh, that has been such a, um, uh, a, a, a problem for many uh, has been made desolate. And this is a picture of that. It has come to an end, in other words. And so we want to understand that. Now, uh, he says rejoice over her. Um, it, it's, it's not as to gloat but that the system ha that has held so many people bound for a lifetime has come to its end. Revelation 18, 20 says, Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets or saints and apostles, for God has avenged you on her or in behalf of her. Uh, the point is that God avenged you by destroying that religious system known as the law. Now, when God avenged you or this picture that, that uh, John is showing us here as he writes in this symbolic language, it, here's the fact that what Babylon intended to invoke on a people to bleed them dry, now God has invoked his grace and mercy upon a people uh, and brought them into an, an awareness of that. So, so the point is, is that God destroyed that system. Uh, you started out in grace from before time began. Adam fell in his thinking, and that legalistic system of thought convinced many that they were of Adam. So in the process, the course of time, Cain built a city, the son of Adam, built a city to make a name and leave a heritage for himself. However, you cannot build a city for yourself. And here's why. Because you are the city of God. And every man-made system will fall because you are the system of God. And his mind is the operations manual of the power that runs it. So in John's vision, it was as though this Babylonian system of a false mindset was judged by God. Now, this is, again, a picture that, that John is showing us as he's seeing this, this symbolic vision. Uh, so remember the judgment of God, which often is associated with the wrath of God, is simply translated the passion of God's consuming fire of love, burning that system or that mindset out of you. And this is a metaphor. Uh, and, 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 and this metaphor tied into this portion of the verse concerning why they rejoice over the destruction of Babylon. However, in this symbolic message, it was an indication of those in the first century rejoicing in knowing that they were free from the law of rules and now bound by the law of God's unconditional love. When God frees you from one system, he makes available or makes known to you the true system. So the system of the law uh, is dead. The, the law of sin and death is dead. But the system of the law of God's love is very much alive in you. This was the message from the heart of God to all of his creation. So in this setting of Revelation 18, verse 19 and 20, it says, Rejoice over her, O heaven and you holy apostles and prophets. Now the whole system came to an end, yet within us, we are learning to walk in the Christ mind so that we will walk out of operating in that false system. And I want you to understand when we talk about coming out of a system, we're, we're talking about a religious mindset. And, and out of that mindset, we are really uh, seeing that we always had the mind of God, uh, but it, it was as though we looked at the perfect law of liberty in our creation. We entered this world system and we looked away from the law of God or from the mind of God, and we, we, uh, we forgot who we were created to be. Now, uh, I, I want to, to say this, that the kingdom of God is established. OK, the kingdom of God always has been established and yet is being established um, by manifesting 
in our awareness, which is why we, why, uh, why Jesus told us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And the fact is, is that uh, when Jesus said these words, we need to realize that, um, um, that uh, his kingdom already is, but we're just not aware of the reality of that kingdom. So as we pray, thy kingdom come in heaven, in the higher realms of God's mind, in God's mind, uh, mind eye, or the way God sees it, on the earth, to our lower realm, earthly thinking, so that our earthly thinking becomes one or transforms into that heavenly realm thinking. So this is a declaration of the established will of God in the heavenly realms within you and not the establishing of what will come. And what John saw in this vision was also uh, in Revelation 11, 15. Now, I want to say this about a Re Revelation 11, 15, uh, because we so, uh, sometimes we get this, uh, 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 we, we get this misunderstood. Notice these words. This is from the New King James. You can read it from the King James also. Uh, but here it says, then the seventh angel sounded, and there was a loud voice in heaven saying, the kingdoms, or this should actually be translated kingdom singular, the kingdom of this world have become, not will become, but have become. I want you to see this, that everything is in the past tense because it's already done. Not will become, but have become the kingdom of our God, Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So again, this is not in our future, but in our past the totality of the kingdom and rule of the world systems have become conquered. Uh, uh, that mindset has become conquered by our Lord and of his Christ. And he reigns forever and ever, just as he always has reigned from before the foundation of the universe began. Again, Revelation 18, 20 from the Passion Translation, rejoice over her, O heaven, you apostles and prophets and holy believers, rejoice. For on your behalf, God pronounced the judgment against her that she uh, wanted to bring up on you. So this just kind of confirms what I've already said uh, as we see how that, that everything that this false mindset intended to invoke upon you has been reversed. And this is portrayed here in the minds of these first century believers. Uh, and so as they understood the revelation of this vision, uh, they that became their point of rejoicing in this great victory. Now for us, we rejoice because it is finished, right? Uh, we don't rejoice because it will be finished, uh, that it might be finished, or that we hope it will be finished. We rejoice because it is finished. This is the day for us to understand that we reign with Christ and in Christ and intertwined with Christ in the heavenly or in the heavenly Christ over all the works of God's hands, just as the eternal truth of God was established by himself since, uh, as he said in Genesis chapter one. Now, we have victory over all things, right? And this is not a long lesson this morning, but we have victory over all things. And the victory that we have over all things, or even in our mind, we can refuse to walk in that defeated mindset. And this Babylonian system does not and cannot exist in you. So let me just share this as I move toward a close this morning, because I, I don't have a long lesson as we're moving into some other revelation of scripture in this series. I, I want to tell you that uh, you will never be in a place of of seeking victory or looking for victory unless that mindset of a religious system tells you that you do not have the victory of the eternal Christ. The, the fact is, is that when Jesus came, he didn't come, and I want to say this again, he didn't come to, to save your, your human spirit uh, to be reborn, but he came to save your soul. Now, that's a very common expression, misunderstood, but a very common expression to save souls. He that saves souls is wise. 
Well, here's the thing. The soul is defined as the mind, will, intellect, and emotions, not the spirit. The spirit man is eternally whole, eternally full of the fullness of God, the full knowledge of God, the fullness of the mind of God. And we need to understand that to save a soul means to save your mind, the place of the skull, the place of the mind. He come to get your mind straightened out, right? Or he come to, again, to reconnect you to the right mindset, which is, is his mindset. Now, because of that, again, I want to say, as I said uh, toward the beginning of this lesson, that it, he, the sacrifice of Jesus opened a door, uh, opened a door that says, I am reconnected to God. Now, just because there are people who don't realize that and they still walk in the carnal mind doesn't mean that the door has not been opened. Doesn't need, mean that this victorious living this is out of the Christ consciousness does not belong to them. It just means that they haven't come into awaken to that awareness yet. And so I have hope for people. You know, I used to say when people criticize the church, I still have hope for the church. Well, I want to say that just because you criticize or you may criticize or hear someone criticize someone among those of mankind. I want to tell you, I still have hope for mankind, even the worst of mankind, even the best of mankind. I still have hope because Jesus came to reconnect our 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 mistaken identity back to our God identity. So I just want to say that as this new covenant remnant uh, that we are uh, in the eternal Christ continues to emerge and be unveiled to this generation around us, we are bringing healing and order to the chaos within God's creation. Therefore, we're going to have to be willing to embrace the idea of change within our own thinking concerning who we are in the eternal Christ so that we will not fall apart as God works this revelation of truth within us so that those old religious mindsets of religion or, or of the law, that, that's what I refer to the religion as, uh, will come to an end. So I want to ask you, uh, are you ready for what's next? This is lesson number 149. Next week, we're moving into, hope to move into Revelation uh, to lesson 150. And what we're going to see is a continuation of the emerging of, of, of corrections within our mindset. I want to say, stick with me on this journey as we continue to see more of the revelation of the unveiling of the eternal Christ within you, who is the hope of glory to the whole world around us. Amen. And, and remember this, that we remain in the eternal Christ who lives and abides forever. And that is where we live and move and have our being uh, or, or our very existence. And so I just always end by saying this, that it's time to embrace heaven's mindset right now in this life so that we can experience heaven on earth. Because the fact is, is you have the Christ mind, even if you're not aware that you have the Christ mind. So be encouraged as you pursue truth uh, in relationship with the Father. Remember, we are face to face or it's face into face and we are connected eternally with our creator. The creation and the creator cannot be disconnected, cannot be separated. You are connected with your God and trust him for the unveiling of revelation to, uh, to, uh, to just emerge in you so that you begin to think just like his mind. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. And I'll see you next time on Take Another Look with lesson number 150 as we look at more of the revelation of the eternal Christ in you, with you, through you, as a part of you, and as you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Have a great day.